as the sun sets on another day in Charlotte, it rises on a country of contrasts, on a city on the move. This is New Delhi, where 15 million people are trying to scratch out an existence. 8,000 miles from Charlotte, it is undeniably third world, where you find a street corner salesman trying to work a deal. Buy five, get one free, this one. Where you find a 13-year-old, not in school, but hitting up tourists. What's your name? Nasima. Nasima. And it's where you find a toddler alone on a sidewalk, whose picture you'll never forget. But not far from the smog, the poverty, the chaos, you'll also find things that look American, including quite possibly your job in one of these office towers bearing names you know. This is Gargone, a place brimming with young, educated professionals capitalizing on an expanding global economy. To them, outsourcing means incoming. But is it easier to find a job now than it was? Now it's, it's pretty easy. Now it's pretty easy. We walked up to one of those office towers and struck up a conversation with A.J. Taigi. He's an accountant doing tax work for foreign companies. What about those who are the, the critics who will say they're not paying you what they should be paying you for these big global companies? Uh, it's not as compared to the Australian, uh, American U.S. worker. U.S. worker would be getting pretty much maybe four times than us, but it's a job satisfaction here. Do you think it'll keep improving though? It'll keep improving. I think uh, these companies are putting in a lot of hard work towards developing new talent. Developing so, yeah. new talent in a lot of new career fields. All right, so just give me a moment to pull up your account. You've heard about Indian call centers, but here you'll also find those doing human resource work, budget analysis, even x-ray interpretations. May I have your first and last name, please? They work for BPOs which stands for Business Process Outsourcing. The result? Something else we see in America. Consumerism on full display in modern upscale shopping malls. Uh, I suppose those centers, have they been good for business? <laughs> but is that yes? Definitely yes. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> this is Metropolitan Mall, Gargone's Concord Mills. Supporters of offshoring like to talk about trickle-down economics. They point out that for every job created at a BPO center, another two jobs is created somewhere else in things like retail, construction, and security. Inside these malls, you'll find more names you recognize and the age group you'd expect, complete with a little American-like parental defiance. My father is not happy. Why is he not happy? Yeah. What did he want you to do? Yeah, because uh, he's well educated. Turns out this young man is going to school, readying himself for a BPO job. His father, though, wants him to stay in college longer for a chance at an even better career. Is he getting over it? <laughs> yeah. He, 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 <laughs> Clearly, the lure of job and cash is strong. It's working out for A.J. Taegi. Well, I'm married. I have a daughter, and I have my own house and my own car. So you've been able to sort of live out your dreams. Yeah, now a, couple, a few dreams, you do bring your dreams back to you yourself. You accomplished quite a lot. That's good. The question, did it come at the expense of the American dream? It's 9 a.m. and a middle-class neighborhood of New Delhi comes to life. It's the kind of neighborhood that's become home to a growing number of young IT workers. It's also home for Gautam Modi, a local union organizer. The attraction, I guess, for kids from this kind of neighborhood is easy money. Easy money, but tough working conditions. He says IT workers put in long hours with few, if any, rights. Well, these are certainly high-tech sweatshops. There's no doubt about it. Bangladesh. Yeah. Pramod Basin is the CEO of Genpak, one of the giants of global outsourcing. Please come. I'm happy for anybody to come in and check what we do and how we do it. So we did. We found worker after worker with noses and computer screens. Seems you have no shortage of work. Not at all. 24 by 7. And it's clear productivity is paramount. Color-coded score sheets sit at the end of each row grading progress, leadership, but also the level of fun. So somebody has turned it red. Red will get you a visit from a team leader. Genpact calls it people management. The union 
calls it something else. Extremely oppressive working conditions, extremely tight supervision, very little autonomy, not even the right to ask questions. Our employees vote with their feet. If we don't give them good working conditions, these kids will walk out the door. Unions aren't the only critics, though. A recent report funded by India's labor ministry compared working conditions to 19th century prisons. The report is complete. I honestly, Basin says it has no credibility because of simple economics. Record numbers of new contracts are being signed. It has created fierce competition for workers. It's why GenPact offers perks like free transportation, even a free lunch. When you work here, that's right. Yeah. And salaries are rising 10 to 14 percent a year. Money trickling back into that now busy middle-class New Delhi neighborhood. I can tell you, yes, people have more money now. They do. Kapil Mani is a small business owner. It's been a positive for excellent, this area? Excellent. Good. I mean, India today is uh, uh, more powerful than what it used to be. Even Gautam Modi admits the old neighborhood has changed. New businesses are popping up. So why is that not a positive? That's not a positive because there's clearly been a redistribution of income. Redistribution between the between the between the rich and against the poor. I think the unions need a cause. They're losing ground. They will continue to lose ground in this open market economy, where now these kids have more opportunity than they ever hoped to have. Depending on your point of view. This is the site. These are the faces of either your competition or your partners in a changing global economy. I remember thinking, you know, when we first started this, saying, if we get to a thousand people, that'll be fabulous. Pramod Basin is the CEO of Genpak, a giant in global outsourcing, a company recently hired by Wachovia that in just 10 years has grown to 22,000 employees. How many will we have by the end of this year? Uh, 25,000. And the next year after that? 30. You, you expect that continued pace of growth? Easy. Easy? Easy. It's great for Indians. What about Americans? The fact is, it does help American companies become much more competitive. If the argument goes the cost savings realized in India allow companies to focus on growth areas back home. There's also improved efficiencies. When it's quitting time in the States, the work is handed off to India operations go 24 hours. It's why companies like Bank of America and Wachovia have called this win-win. Yet as we've been working on these stories for several months now, we have asked repeatedly for on-camera interviews to go in-depth about the offshoring of work. Both banks refused. Keith King, however, did talk to us. His company hires IT workers on a contract basis. Is any job in America safe anymore? Oh, I don't think so. We live in a free economy, so uh, a person who has a job is not guaranteed to have a job for any period of time. But he says it's not all gloom and doom. So you feel there is opportunity in this line of work in this community? Oh, absolutely. IT is hot in the city right now. There are a lot of opportunities. The proof, he says, is on this board. So everything in white up there actually is an open position. The flow of jobs to India did create a glut of IT workers, but a shift is underway. There is work for those who are keeping up to date with the latest technology. I think being in this industry is a lot like swimming upstream. And, and the moment that a person who's swimming upstream stops paddling, they go backwards. And that can make you expendable in a hurry, especially in the global economy. I think this will be India's biggest industry at some point in time. An economy where others are more than willing to do your job. In Gurgaon, India, Jamie Bowl, WBTV, News 3. It's quitting time in Gurgaon. Is your day over? You done working? Yeah, I'm working with Citibank. The Citibank? Yeah. For tens of thousands of young Indians in this city outside of New Delhi, it's been another full day of working for American corporate giants. Is this an exciting time to be in India? Yeah, yeah. The type of work being done here may surprise you. It's not just entry-level stuff anymore. Here we do uh, analytics, 
Analytics is uh, basically risk analytics. This is again insuring the insurer. You are walking through the offices of Genpak, the outsourcing company recently hired by Wachovia. Promote Basin is the company's CEO. You know, whatever you can outsource, you can actually do out here. And whatever you don't have to do on site can be done from you. We've it's because India has some important things going for it. First off, English. It's everywhere, spoken and written. Secondly, in a country of a billion people, there's plenty of young, educated, worker wannabes. You know, all our lives, India's population has been a handicap. Today, it's our advantage. And it works to the advantage of American companies. These people will work six days a week, take fewer vacations, and a lot less pay. Bottom line, more work is done at a fraction of the cost. I always tell my teams, I said, the day someone else is cheaper, we're moving, guys. Just like, you know, we go to the U.S. and ask our customers in the U.S. to give us business, I'll give somebody else business. So I think that's just healthy. But if you think that you're putting your So give me an example of, of what kinds of work they're doing. This is the financial services. India is not just importing American jobs. India's young people prove it's also importing American culture. Troubling to fathers like A. Run Color. Today young youths are becoming as rude as I'm, I'm very sorry to say, like the Americans. Color owns a small retail shop in the heart of New Delhi. His father opened it 70 years ago. His son, though, won't be following in the family business. He's taken an IT job. I feel it, this BOP or the IT industry, mm -hmm. is killing the younger generation. Color says his son, like many, works 13-hour days, pulling in about $20,000 a year. Good money in India. What do these young people do with their money? See, uh, they booze it out. They go to the discos. They are also spending time and money in India's new shopping malls. And they're taking out loans for things like cars, a very foreign concept. In India, saving has always come first. As society has become more consumerist, where, you know, the kind of shoes you have, the number of shoes you have, all matter. Gautam Modi is a union organizer in New Delhi. He says the cultural shift leaves IT workers desperate to hold on to their jobs. They know they're going to do them for the rest of their lives. They're wondering about how they can cope with, 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 with st such stressful conditions for, for an entire working life. It's that kind of stress that worries a parent. Is there any stopping it now, though? There's no stopping. No stopping. Stopping is not there. Reason is we want our country to grow, but grow in a proper manner. Walk the streets of New Delhi and you'll find so many intriguing images. But what sticks with you is the poverty. How many do you sell a day? 100 rupees. 100 a day you sell? Yeah. Really? Yes. How much do you make doing that? Yeah, yeah how much? Do you I make little profit, not big. <laughs> not big profit? On average, people here get by on just $3,400 a year. Then there are the children. 10 years old. Do you go to school? School for No. No go to school? 50% are malnourished. It's estimated 11 million live on the streets. All this in a country in the midst of a high-tech boom. There are 1 million outsourcing jobs in India right now. That sounds like a lot, but keep in mind, there are a billion people living in this country. So that's just one-tenth of 1%. 1 it means in places like Old Delhi, Globalization still very much a foreign term. It's really a drop in the ocean. Gautam Modi is a union organizer working out of a middle-class New Delhi neighborhood. He says the burst of new jobs is only sharpening the divide between the haves and have-nots. It's not helping the extremely poor. It's not even helping the working class. So it's really helping uh, a middle-class population, which is English-educated, which would have got jobs anyway. But clearly, a trickle-down is underway. Increased wages are improving some neighborhoods. The poverty rate is slowly improving. But for some, it's not happening fast enough.
Rising up out of the dust of Gurgaon, India is an oasis of modern technology. This suburb of New Delhi is a fast growing outpost in the new global economy. Lots of construction around here. It's also home to Genpak, the outsourcing giant which has a seven year contract with Wachovia, the latest American company to come aboard. What's over here? G aircraft engines. It is a modern work environment. Employees here doing mostly analyst work. They are young, well educated, and in demand. It must put them put pressure on you to provide more and more. Huge, huge pressure. Promote Basin is Genpak's CEO. He says job offers from other companies lure 20 percent of his employees away every year. And that's a lot of talent walking out of the door every day, especially the talent you've been training for six to nine months at a time. Slowing the exodus has led to an increase in pay and perks. Genpak provides transportation to and from work. Meals are free. So is the health club. And there's even on-site medical care. How important is that? I mean, the morale. Yeah, yeah it is very important here. Yeah, the goal, Genpak says, is to make work as fun as possible. Yeah, yeah, these are the names of the training rooms. ABBA, Beatles, Sting, and Rolling Stones. Important when trying to hire new people. But make no mistake, it is still a bottom line business with rigorous demands. So you have to go through some interview process here? Just two more rounds. Two more rounds. It's a business succeeding because it provides a product done cheaper. A lot of motivational things I notice, yeah. you know. This way? New Delhi, India. 15 million people live here and the traffic is unbelievable. Absolute chaos. Now I'm sure there are rules, we just couldn't tell what they were. Fortunately, the driver we hired, Surrender, was all over it. And here's something else you don't see in the U.S. Cows. Everywhere. In New Delhi alone, it's estimated that there are over 40,000 of these beasts roaming the streets. They're considered sacred, dating back to the days of cow herder Lord Krishna. Now, these docile creatures will never be served with mushrooms, but if you hurt one, you just might be. And speaking of bulls, I found another exotic breed running loose, a full-blooded American reporter, Jamie Bull. Absolute chaos. In quest of this story, Jamie spent four days pestering pretty much everyone. So no one can talk? No. Speak English? Is this your wife? Yes. It will not. Don't lie to me. But I guess he did make himself useful at times. Ready, here we go, one, two, three. He had no use for this snake, even after the charmer told him it wouldn't bite. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah, he doesn't bite. We both found India to be a friendly place, and they didn't seem to mind the camera. Yeah, all right, except for this guy. No, 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 no. But they were good to us, and we tried to treat them well. In fact, we let this guy, who weighed maybe 85 pounds, pull us around on his rickshaw for a couple of hours at 98 degrees. And as a photographer, this was a new and often third world of images. Many of which will never fade away.